That's why so many stores are for sale. And that's why they're 300 grand because the guy bought it for 300 grand and he's got to get his 300 grand out of it. It's disgusting. And you're a good person, but you're over here selling magic beans because you yep. were Jack. You fell for it. Oh, thank you so much. It's happening. It's actually happening. All right, so you have, uh, wh where are you at in the pro? So you got a 3,000 square foot store-ish. What are the highlights? What's the landlord giving you? How much are you getting for free? What'd you do? All right, well, uh, we've added this back and forth. Uh, we ended at 16 in rent. Uh, it's given me 12 months. Not, he's given me more than 12 months. It's uh, 14 months of abatement, giving me 12K in TI. And uh, uh, the laundry was owned by, like you said, a, a large distributor that went in there and didn't didn't really operate it. You know, they had employees operate in it. And um, it closed in 18 not 18, no, 23, excuse me. It was on the 18th, August 18th of 20. Are you like so a raving dyslexic it. when it comes to numbers? Why did you say 12 yeah. months free if it's actually 14, just the habit? Well, because they gave me an extra 60 days because the 60 days is delivery day and then the commencement date is starts the abatement period and you know there's nice. all these little things in there. So, Four, 14 months uh, for free rent and you know, I don't want to make assumptions, but people don't even know that exists. The landlord's not going to tell you, you know, they, they might, oh, you know, we'll give you 30 days, XXX, 12, why is it $12,000 in free money for tenant improvements? How, how'd that, how'd that figure come up? Well, I, I said, oh, I don't want this equipment. This equipment is all junk and, you know, most of it pretty much is. And, and then we went back and forth and then I said, I'm going to be cleaning up your space. And we went back and forth and I asked for money two or three times and no, no, no. And then they finally came back and they gave me a, a best and final and it included 12 K and. That is the worst yeah. negotiation tactic of all time. You never say best and final because number one, you're going to end up going back on it. And you look like a fool. Number two, if you don't go back on it, you are a fool. No one ever says that. If you don't do X, I'm going to do Y. Well, that's, I'm sorry, that's extortion. And beyond that, mm -hmm. best and final offer. Oh, okay, you're going to slam the, that's how deals get blown up, not made. So now you are, you've signed this thing, you have the keys. No, I don't. I should probably sign it here Monday or Tuesday next week. You better. It's, uh... Do not deal with the distributors until you have the lease in hand. Because right now, even moments before signing it, you're just some guy. I'm not saying you can't make appointments, but don't give them the address. Because I've seen where they slurp the address back. They go in and offer this guy money for it, et cetera. Oh, he's giving you 16. I'll give you 20. It happens. So be careful. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's the big question? Or did you already bring them uh, in and start start showing them the space? Well, I found this. I got into it through a distributor. Okay, so they all so. they all know that it's there. Yeah. Okay. They're the ones that told me. They're the ones that got me access to the landlord. Um, I've been dealing with one of these distributors for five or six years. But, Let me guess. So I got. They're convinced that you're going to, and we'll leave na the names out of it. But the distributor that formerly ran the place that turned you on to the landlord just assumes that you're going to buy equipment from them at probably at retail. Yeah, yeah. It it. Uh, so I got them competing against each other, and they didn't like that, and and you know all the. The things that you said that they would say, they, they did say, oh, you know, that guy over there, you know, he doesn't know how to fix X, Y, and Z, and that guy over there, you know, they, they said bad things about each other. But, you know, the equipment, uh, it started off at like 300, and 
now we're into the two, like 258. And I squeezed and, and I, I saw tears rolling down their face and, oh, their kids weren't going to get fed and, and all that type of stuff. And, <laughs> and, and then, I've, you know, they're competing against each other. And, and the one guy is like, I can't go any lower. I can't go any lower. And then I said, okay, well, Bye. he's at X and you're at Y. Well, then like three days went by and then he called me again and he's like, what do we have to do to get this? <laughs> get this? What did I just say 30 seconds ago? Never say best yeah. and final. It's just not how you work. Yeah. So now he's, now he's a liar. I mean, you know, don't know who they are. Don't know which companies It just, it's, it's so, it's so silly. That's the best we can do. I hope you go with us because our equipment's better than the other guy. Two days, three days later. Well, yeah, I ignoring them is really the hardest part, but that's the only way you get what you want. Are you in or are you out? It's not show friends, it's show business. Well, he, he said, I can take up to 20, maybe even a little bit more off. What do I need to do to get the job? And I'm like, oh my God. Like, we were talking nickels and dimes before, and then three days goes by and you come back with 20 grand. <laughs> you know, so it's like, you can tell there's a lot of profit margin in this. $20,000, that's a full auto transferable Uzi in nine millimeter. That's pretty good. Yeah. I'm like on a buying frenzy with guns right now. So I keep looking at everything in those terms. <laughs> Don't forget the ammo. Uh, I get it. Uh, Daniela gets ammo for free. Remington <laughs> sponsored. <laughs> So t tell me, did you actually have them come in and see each other's faces? Well, they, they know each other. Yeah. They, they, uh, they, they, one, one used to work for the other one. And that's, that it's always very incestuous. Sure. Yeah. And, and we're not, a, you know, it's not a big community here, but they, they, they know each other and, um, they, they don't, you know, they pull out the, you know, Oh, you know, we've been working together for so long and, you know, all those, all those, and they're nice guys, you know, sure. it, 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 you know, they're all nice guys. They're talking about my kids and, you know, you know, football games and all that type of stuff. And it comes down to the end, you know, and, and you're starting to, to tighten the screw a little bit. You can tell that um, there's margin, uh, yeah. there's margin there for them, but they're, they're, like you say, they're trying to eat steak on you. Don't do this to me. We have history, Dennis. Oh, yeah. We got history, all right, Jerry. Home, yeah, yeah the, it, it's okay if they want to have a steak dinner, but not every Friday and not on you and not for the year. You go to Lowe's or Home Depot to buy an appliance, and you see the price is, is X. X, X, X. You know that when you go from Lowe's to Home Depot, the price isn't going to be X, X, X times two. If it's a $1,000 washing machine at Lowe's, do you expect to drive across town to Home Depot and see it for 2000 Of course not. That's just not reasonable or realistic. It's not the way the world, maybe it's a couple bucks. Maybe you even price shop like Walmart does. You can say, hey, I found this price. Can you match it? Sure, they don't care. Now we're talking about mm -hmm. a major corporation where the profit is 5% and it's built in before they even bring the product to the store. They've got 100 employees. 10,000 people delivering stuff, all of that machine behind it. Now we're talking about industrial equipment distributors who want to make their gear every time they mm -hmm. sell equipment. And all you have to do, and sadly you have to do it. Look, would you go buy a car from a dealership with no sticker prices? Mm -hmm. That's what they do. It's what they still do, even though right at this very moment, going out through the inner tubes, that's a real word, going out through the interwebs on the YouTubes, we're talking about it. And it still won't stop them because 94% of people will just come and go, oh, that's what it costs. I like you. Thank you for the slice of pizza that you bought for me. Let's do it. And they're looking at numbers. Did they give you all the TI and the Performa and the the yeah. turns per day? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. It's interesting though that you look at their equipment and um, 
they, they say that, oh, you know, I don't have any margin in it, or, or, I, or this is the lowest that I can go. But um, a piece of equipment from distributor X and a distributor Y, it, it'll be different prices all the way down. I was like, well, he's $500 less on a 40 pounder than you. Why? I thought, I thought you had a fixed price on this. And then, but then they, they adjust all these, you know, so there's so much play in it. Is and then it, it, do, you, do you feel icky saying that to them, having to say that to them, having to go through the emails and say, what you say, this is it. It's final price. This is all I can offer. And if you make it, if, if let's just say that we were comparing a Ferrari to a Hyundai, it would make sense, but there are no Ferraris and really no Hyundais in the laundry industry. So once you get that out of the way, because yeah. they don't say that. Oh, well, our machines are warranted for 25 years. No parts, no labor. Oh, shit. they don't do that. It's apples to apples versus Ferrari pricing. So my question is emotional. D does it feel weird to have to say this to them? Well, a little bit, you know. I <laughs> A little bit, yeah. And I, that's exactly uh, how they get away with it, bro. The weirdness factor, right? Yeah. Well, because um, uh, the guy, one guy says, well, I'll beat him by like two grand. And I'm like. No matter what. It's just feel. No matter what. Yeah, I'll beat him by two. Okay. I'll beat him so, by two grand or three grand. And, and, get the and, prices and I, for all like, the top loaders. Pardon me. All the front loaders that you need in this this poundage. All the tumblers that you need. And if we're matching, matching, same, same, no matter what his price is, I'll beat it by 2K. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. But how can he say that? <laughs> how can he say yeah. it? That's what you've got to yeah, wonder. Yeah, yeah. If I go to buy yeah, a Ford and, and, and then Ford says, here's the sticker. And then I go to Chevrolet the next day and he goes, oh, I hate that guy over at Ford. Whatever his price is, I'll beat it by $2,000. Okay. Shit. Now I got to trudge my ass back across the street and then come back. That, that, doesn't that just make you wonder what in the is going on it does yeah and and and, and that's that that was after like all this negotiation and then the, the funny thing is is and we'll see where this lands because um like you said it, you know i said okay i want 100 percent financing uh, yep. and i want i want zero percent and i want the distributor to, uh, to to finance it no absolutely not no absolutely not no absolutely okay so then i went out and i got a, i got approved from a bank and and I got a loan from a bank and, you know, okay, it's at, at equipment rates and all of that, you know, so then we come down to the end here. And, and then today he calls me or yet last night, yesterday, he calls me and he says, well, what do you need to, what do you need to make this work? I'm going to make this decision easy for you. Okay. Just what does your heart tell you? Okay. And I said, this is what I want. hundred percent financing. No money I, down. The, yeah, hundred percent. No money down. We don't do any of that. We don't do. We can't do any of that. I said, "You asked me what I wanted. What? And this is what I want. If you want the deal, this is this is what I want." So then today I got an email. He sent me an email and he said, "We talked with the distributor and they're going to be giving you a call here uh, later today or tomorrow." So it's like it was not possible, and but now it is. Now they want to have a conversation. Hundred so percent financing. Like, no, let's talk about that. So you ever buy a, you ever buy a brand new car? Yes. What's the best percentage rate you ever got? No, 1%, 2%. Yeah. You know, there's 0%. Yeah. It exists. So it hinges on your credit score, right? Sadly. Yep. And look, Chevrolet does it. Honda, Ford, Foreign automakers like BMW and Mercedes are getting into it. Zero percent. I don't care if it's a $300,000 G-Wagon or a $40,000 Ford pickup truck. Brand new, they can offer it, but it only comes from the manufacturer. And it only comes when you have an exquisite credit score and they're offering it. Okay. So you'll see it and, and mm -hmm. everybody on here, like, oh, I never knew that existed. Well, maybe because you have shitty credit, maybe because you've never paid your bills on time. The reason for paying your bills on time and having good credit, I don't care if you make $30,000 a year or 3 million. The 3 millionaires, people think, well, they don't need credit. Sure you do. 
in order to make $6 million next year through whatever business deal. And it's the small incremental stuff that stacks up. Why am I talking about cars? Because it's something that everybody rec recognizes. You're going to mm -hmm. crack up because you'll see a commercial. I saw a commercial the other day for the Hyundai. They pick the model. Sometimes they do that. They can do whatever they want. The Hyundai Sonata, whatever it was, 0%, 84 months. It's seven years interest-free. Do it. Even if you have the cash, now the cash is remaining in your bank while you're giving them an interest-free, they're giving you an interest-free loan. Do it. 1% yep. is great, but if you hold out for zero, you get it. How can these guys do that? Because, brother, they are the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Oh, we talked to the distributor. That's like DeWalt, who makes the tools, saying, oh, I spoke to Home Depot, and they're going to make you that deal. What? Who's really in charge? DeWalt is in mm -hmm. charge, not Home Depot. That's just a retailer. So this is exciting. So we have more to come. We are embroiled in the yeah. center of doing the thing. And what you have learned is what you do not do is get excited and sign on the line before it is too late. Tell me you didn't sign because I'm still sort of moved by your my word is stronger than oak thing which never happens. Well, the, the, the one thing that you've, you've said through this, through this, you know, and um, I went out on, on my own and called these guys and got in the middle of it, but um, it being emotional because, you know, I, I want the extra income. I want the business. I want, want all of that. And it's, it's hard because um, they can hear it in your voice a little bit, right. And you're eager Right, and you want the deal well, to move forward and, and all of that type you, of stuff. But You think they can, and that goes back to negotiating, right? Whether you're a prostitute on the street corner or it's your wife, and I'm not saying those are the same thing, or, you know, we're, <laughs> we're talking about equipment distributors. They're not mind readers, and they don't know what you think. And some people will avoid meeting in person for that reason. Oh, I don't want them to see my shoes or the Rolex I do or don't wear. Mm -hmm. And none of that's real. And really, I, I think that if you're able to flip a switch in your head and be a little more like Danny, or some people will tell me, it's probably happened with you, I've got you on my shoulder. You know, I'm sort of Dannying people. And it, it's a real thing. You know, they're trying to make a sale and you're trying to make your living. That's how I feel. I'm concerned about your family. I'm concerned about the future. That's the difference. And you've got to stand strong. Guy shows up. Guy has a trailer. Guy wants to buy your couch. Well, he just rolled up with a trailer and his wife. He's taken the couch. And then when he says, yep. well, I know you want 1000 but will you take 800 Hey, take the other two out of your wife's purse and let's get this done. That's exactly what people do. They'll literally take out $800 and start flipping it like, oh, I don't have the extra. Yeah, it's in your wife's purse. I've done that. <laughs> I've literally said that to people. Yeah, take it out. And they're like, shit, this guy's crazy. I'm not reading minds. I just know the way people play games. You're here with a trailer. Yeah, I want to sell it. You want it more than I want to sell it. Yeah, it's a great deal, mm -hmm. but the price is the price. And then you just stand there until somebody talks. You are mm -hmm. going to be earning that profit, but you shouldn't be in a hurry to do it. Let's back way up. So how old are you? I'm 49. You had to think about it? No. I know I always do. 49 years old, doing this thing, you are perfectly situated. In a decade from now, you'll probably have two or three of these stores rocking and rolling, and you'll always remember the first one. You're doing it mm -hmm. properly, and you know yeah. when you fall asleep at night, whether it's with the help of some whiskey or not, you know that you're doing this right. Did you ever look to buy one? Well, that, that's what prompted me to you is we were, <laughs> we were going to buy one, two of them and, uh, you know, the, the classic 300 a store. Right. And, and, uh, I apologize that, for not remembering Ryan, cause I don't yeah. ever remember. So go ahead. So you were looking yeah. at two for 300 a piece, same seller. Yeah. Same seller. And then we, I was standing there and, 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 and he had a couple of auto order machines and he said, you know, I just haven't had like four or five hours to come down here and, and, and fix those machines. And I was like, God, four or five hours, you know? What do you stand for? 
for? How about a little piece of integrity? Oh my God, I, I, I don't want to, you know, be down here on on Saturdays and Sundays because I got a, a full time job, right? I don't want to be down here on Saturdays and Sundays fixing washing machines. I said, I want, I want to be collecting quarters. You know, and that was the thing that kind of tipped me off. Is like I need, I need to get new equipment in here, and that's when I went out and and I found you and and that's how this whole thing came about. And then, Damn. you know, so I got this, I got this, I'm going to get this store for free. And, and, you know, I would have turned around and I would, cause I had the money. I would have, I had the money. I would have went out and scratched a check for 300 and financed it. And, and then I'd be down there, you know, sucking my thumb because I'd have old shitty equipment and, and it'd just be a miserable situation. So it took, you know, from, February till now to get this this going, um, but I saved the three hundred, and then you know through this negotiation, you kind of been sitting on my shoulder the whole time, uh, you know squeezing these distributors a little bit and squeezing the the landlord. I I, I wouldn't have gotten the twelve grand of TI. I wouldn't have gotten the abatement. I wouldn't have asked for those things. It wouldn't have been so. Um, it was, I did just definitely pushed away a little bit. Like, okay, if I don't get this deal, I don't get this deal, but they came to me. I love you know, it. They, they wanted it just, just as, just as much as, you know, I want it at the end of the day. But I know you didn't say no, thank you, but you're welcome. I, <laughs> I hear you saying it. So if you would have purchased that store, it, was it the same operator that had two stores for 300 K per each? Yep. yep. Okay. And he had a landlord and a lease. No, he owned the buildings. Okay. So, so he, he was going to step ended, back and become your landlord. Yes. And he did do that with somebody in town here uh, in May. So he sold one or both stores? Both stores to, to an individual. And uh, so that's essentially that your competition here coming up. No, I'm I'm in a a, a different community. Okay. I'm a half hour half hour south of, yeah. of, of well my town, but on, I'm in on, a different town. But. Because that poor stupid son of a didn't find some dumb guy on YouTube talking about how you shouldn't buy a laundromat ever. He's six hundred k out of pocket. And bro, we talked about this on this very live. What he's looking for is, did you look at financing through him? Was he going to finance the deal with you? Oh seller? yeah, it's sell, seller financing, and you know it was. It all made sense except for profit. the equipment was junk. Profit, yeah. Yeah. No profit. It, well, if you didn't have new, it, it, it all made fine if the equipment was brand new, but the equipment was 10 years old, right? You know, so if you were buying 300 grand worth of equipment and it was all brand new equipment, sure, let's rock and roll, but you weren't. You were getting old shitty equipment and, and having the, the 300 worth of debt, so you didn't really get anything. Let me be selfish for a second here and help out the folks at home. So you're, you didn't know about me. You're about to, to give the guy 600 K because you know, you're almost 50 years old and you've done well in life and you have it saved. That's hard earned real money. Somebody didn't give you that money. That's your money. That's your 401 K. So you're ready to give him that. And then something just didn't seem right. And the moment that you decided it wasn't right was when he said, ah, shit, those machines are broke because I don't have the six or se the five or six hours it takes to fix them. And then it all came crashing down. So what did you do? How did you, did you go straight to YouTube? What did you Google? If you can remember that moment in time, how did you go well, from buy, wanting well, to buy them to me? Well, I went on a, a Facebook group and I typed, I, I asked a question uh, about that and it turned into a long conversation. And then somebody mentioned your name in a in one of the one of the comments so then i went over to youtube and you know the rest is history as they say that's how you become great man hang your balls out there yeah i've been i binge watched for you know three months or two <laughs> months every, every well, because it, you know, sometimes you gotta, you gotta pound it into a thick skull, you know? Yeah. And, uh, well, look, I'm a, I mean, I'm a bit of a gruff, gruff guy. And a lot of folks watch one of my 60 second shorts and then they just say, oh, I've got this guy figured out. 
I'm a pussycat on the inside, and really my heart is in keeping folks like you from getting burnt. In life, to be honest, I failed as much as I've succeeded, and I wish you my kind of success. That's it. That's all. We've got somebody that's on the chat in this live right now that's telling us, telling the group he's buying five laundries, he's buying five locations. I hope he's listening to you who is about to buy two locations and now some other poor sucker went and did that and then he's going to have to spend another six, seven hundred thousand dollars on equipment. And that's a okay, but why spend the three or the six? You, you, you can you can buy a store, but the equipment's got to be, you got to, it's the equipment's got to be new. So then why would you? Why would you buy a store with new equipment? That is someone selling you a flip. Think about it. If you buy a flip house and you want to live in it, I'm okay with it, right? You're not trying to make money. That's not a business deal. You're buying a very nice house for a decent price. The previous guy, is it okay to say, hey, what'd you pay for this boat? Not really. There's a blue book. Is it okay to say, hey, did your dad give you this Corvette? Not really. There's a blue book. If the mileage correct and the paint is good, buy the car if you like it. Now, when we're talking about business, flipping a house is the worst house in the best neighborhood and the poor bastard lost the house to the bank. You scoop it up at a good price. You put new floor mm-hmm. tile and you paint the place and you make sure the toilet's flush and you put it on the market and you make 10 grand. What you're talking about, if someone has new equipment, it's okay to buy it, I beg to differ because now you're buying someone's flip. Who is it, a distributor that built it or some poor bastard didn't know what he's doing? He retooled it and then he says, now I'm gonna sell it. Again, dude, you're doing it right. The only way to do this is what we do. Scout the stores, be able to see past it. Don't bring your wife to the store before it's retooled. Oh my God, what are you you, nuts? All it is is a laundromat, honey. There's 300 grand behind this equipment. It's all there. There's a Mm -hmm. lot for us to go back and forth on. Thank you very much for coming on and doing this with us. I'm not going anywhere. We are consulting, so therefore my time doesn't expire. We together on this, you know what I'm saying? We gonna be one. If you have a question, you text me, I'm gonna get back with you on this. I wanted to sort of allow you to help us to hit those thick skulled knuckleheads over the head and say, don't do the thing. And I don't think I'm making a huge dent. I don't have 2.5 million followers on YouTube. There are others that do, and you know what they're doing? They're towing the line. Go buy a laundromat, use seller financing, because they can sell that easier to the public. You know what I mean? Oh, I, I, it, I, once you start driving around and start looking underneath the hood, like, like scouting the stores you see it you can, you walk in and you can see it plain as day and you can see the people that are failing and you can see the opportunity to so just not always right for the picking at that moment for whatever particular reason your uh, but, life was changed and turned on a dime because those pieces of equipment were broken did he have out of order signs on them no, you, you, there was no door on the there was no door on the machine, so it was it, you knew that it was so broken. The lay, right? Okay, the layperson could look right at it, and it he's lying. He's <laughs> not saying I don't I don't have a couple hours to fix it. What he had done is physically taken parts from that one and put it on another one. That's what he did. Yep. And I was going to say yep. you're lucky to have been able to see those out of order signs because normally before a potential buyer shows you his messed up laundromats, he'll peel off all the out of order signs. And normally, one of the customers will walk up and say, sir, that machine took my money. And then he's like, bidee, bidee, bidee. So you didn't have to go through all that because you're like, why are these machines broken? Oh, yep. five hours. Good. Lucky. You know, act of God type stuff. Yep. What else do you want to no, say? No, it's all good. That's it. It's, it's, uh, it, 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 it's a skill set. Once you start getting in, start scouting the stores, you look at it a little different. And when you look at it from a free perspective, and you look at it from the landlord and, and, and the tenant in there, and the tenant with poor equipment, and you start recognizing um, the opportunity, you can see it everywhere. It, 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 it's not going to happen in five minutes. Maybe it will, you know, if you get lucky, you find the right store or whatever. But 
I got five or six stores around here that I just kind of got my eye on and in one day, you know, that guy that bought those stores for 300, you know, 18 to 24 months from now, I'll stop in there and see how he's doing. And you'll probably see a bunch of machines out of order. Or he'll be tired of being there on Saturdays. And that's when you make that phone call, you know, and exactly. uh, it, it's long game. You know, it's not a, it's not a, an overnight happen, but uh, uh, once you get into it and you get it right, I see this, this store. And when, if you get into it wrong, you're married to the thing for, for 10, 15 years, it can be really painful. No, not like, necessarily. You're going to turn around and sell it to the next sucker. That's what you end up doing. That's why so many stores are for sale. And that's why they're 300 grand because the guy bought it for 300 grand and he's got to get his 300 grand out of it. It's disgusting. And you're a good person, but you're over here selling magic beans because you yep. were Jack. You fell for it. Mm -hmm. All right, dude, don't be a stranger. You're embroiled in it. You're right in the center of it. Stay strong when it comes to these knuckleheads. Understand they don't work weekends. And at the end of the day, you're gonna get exactly what you ask for by simply asking. And keep me in the yep. loop. Keep us all in the loop. Thanks for the time. All right. Take care, Danny. Cheers. I'm pretty sure this hot water heater's got a few more good years left in it.